Welcome back to the big board and welcome to Heroes of the Falklands. Lock and Load have finally got what used to be called Winning of Hills back into production. And uh, I am very, very excited about this. It's been uh, one of the games that I know that it used to be a uh, uh, an expansion. You had to own some other module in the Lock and Load uh, universe to, to actually play it. And now uh, you have a standalone game, as all the lock and load uh, modules will be going forward, a uh, standalone game, which is fantastic, right? So this is uh, modeling some of the combat and uh, conflict that went on in the Falklands War back in the 80s. So it comes under the, the banner of the modern rule set, along with uh, Day of Heroes, Heroes of the Gap, and uh, Honor and Patri. So, pretty interesting stuff because you've got jets, choppers, arty, fun weapons, fun tanks with the uh, imaging and all that sort of infrared imaging and all that heat sensitive imaging and all that sort of good stuff. Now, typically when I do these shrink rips, I try and do them uh, fairly quickly because I, I just assume that you guys don't really like them very much. But I've had a few folks uh, message me and say, hey, look, can you, you know, show us the back of the box more and show us the inside and the details a little bit more and uh, don't, don't worry if you go over five minutes. So I'm going to take my time, show you what's what and so you understand what's in the box and what's not in the box because there's, there's different versions. When you buy this game, if you're on the pre-order list, I believe that you'll be getting something equivalent to this, this Premier Supporter Edition. And uh, if you're buying just the, re you know, uh, after it's released, there's just probably a standard edition. And I must admit, I do not know the difference between the two. <clears throat> At one point, there was talk of making an expanded version of this that included a Soviet intervention into the Falklands. Not sure why the Soviets would intervene in the Falklands, but hey, it sounded like a great idea at the time. Nevertheless, this will just be the standard uh, uh, Ring of Hills game reproduced with, I believe, we'll see when we get inside, with the full uh, with the full rule book and all the rest of it, so that you can play the game without having uh, any the need for any other modules. Okay, so back of the box, you've got some nice counter artwork. You can see what the what the, some of the maps are going to look like. Complexity rating, solitaire rating. The reason why the solitaire rating is so high here really is because it's it's an I go you go game. Uh, it's not that uh, not that hard, and uh, even though there's opportunity fire and stuff in it, it's it's a it's a World War Two equivalent tactical system. So it's pretty straightforward to play by yourself. Uh, you don't need AI for it. Uh, at all, I, I think well, I think this fad with AI systems is uh, a little overdone and not really necessary. But you know, if it's done right, it can be great. Okay, so Argentina, British, getting at it over a chunk of dirt on an island in uh, in the cold wastes of the southern hemisphere. Reasonable <coughs> box art. Excuse me. I've got. Uh, Something stuck in my throat. <clears throat> okay, Premier Supporter page, a little seal of authenticity, etc., etc. This is number 100 of 326. So I guess it may be, does that mean, uh, so there's 326 copies of the Premier uh, edition. Very nice. Core rule book. And this will be in full color with some really nice stuff that I've been adding into the back of the rule book that uh, helps you summarize. It's a rule reference table, but it's really helping you summarize all the rules for all the different segments of the game from how to combine firepower, how to do a damage check, how to do direct fire, melee, uh, off board artillery, usage, ordnance versus armor, etc., etc., stacking limits, how to do double time, low call, stealth movement, you name it, it's all here. It makes it really, really easy to get into this. Uh, there are some of the other titles that uh, are out. These are all out now. Uh, Day of Heroes looks like that's next. I have not seen that yet uh, in, the, in the reprint. Uh, I've shown you this rule book before, the modern rule book. It's it's very, very long because it is full of great examples, commentary, and 
it's just then it's large print large format so while it clocks in at 60 plus pages you have probably you could as I've shown you in the back here you can net this sucker out to two pages it's a very straightforward system to play I would say typically speaking the the lock and load tactical system for tactical combat whether it's World War II or otherwise is uh, nice index the front is aimed squarely at the uh, the more fun end of simulating squad level combat with a dash of Hollywood and I think that makes it very very interesting to play okay so module specific rules and the scenarios are all packed in here there's some, some pretty neat uh, specific rules for this game there's the rough terrain that you know, gets uh, that becomes a factor in the game uh, that you it has a uh, terrain modifier of three which is very high and also costs three to move into it which is very high more interesting than interesting than that is the british marksmanship marksmanship they use a d8 when they shoot not a d6 there are chaplains just like in the uh, the vietnam module that does the same basic thing there's a few other things that the British are pretty known or well known for. Um, they will also be able to self rally. So they, here, we, here it is here the British resiliency uh, squad reductions for them. There's this uh, Argentine Corvette that got involved in some of the, the combat. The flash rule is pretty interesting. When you both roll the same number in uh, the initiative, it, it bumps, it gives this ability to, to the Argentinians where it bumps up their uh, DFT capabilities, their die rolls for Artie, and some other stuff. So instead of rolling one die, they roll two, and they get to choose the better of the two die rolls. And that's to uh, reflect the unpredictability of the Argentine force, which if you read about them, that was kind of, kind of, part, of part, part of their situation. ATGMs, all pretty standard stuff, and then all the scenarios. Uh, these are really nicely laid out. The old, the old module had individual cards that were just fine as well. This is a great scenario. Devil went down to Georgia. Uh, Dawn, I played Dawn's Early Light. I played this several times. It's a really tough scenario to win as the as the Argentinians. Fanning head mob. Now this one I think is included from. This might be from one of the magazines, I think, but I'm not sure. I think that might be an extra. Yeah, that might be an extra. Uh, unexpected drop. I've played that a couple of times and played that opposed. That's a really hard scenario for both sides to play. I've played this many, many, many. I've played this probably six times. This is a great scenario to teach guys, guys and girls how to play quite like the pin scenario. It's pretty hard to play, but uh, it's fun, fun, fun stuff. Uh, it teaches you, uh, you really got to know how to make your approach uh, against the Argentines who are situated up in this double hill here. There's two levels of hill here, and they've got bunkers and stuff along all along here and foxholes, and so the British have got to work out how to close with the enemy with, without getting chewed up. And the Argentines have got to work out how to uh, prevent them, the, the British from getting off the map. I don't think I've played Surprise Party. Milo House is another good one. Not sure if I've played this guy. I may not have played that guy. <coughs> yeah. i played Two Sisters. That's not bad either. The Last Gasp, Gasp is a great scenario as well. It's got some nice uh, surprise uh, special rules in the back. Sav it Up is awesome. Yeah, this is just uh, this is just a really good, really good set of scenarios. Okay, so now there's all the value-added stuff that uh, David Heath is bringing to the table. You've got this rules reference card. So if you don't want to have the rules out, this is specifically for the Falklands. So you've got your British forces breakdowns, uh, the Argentine forces, and all this sort of good stuff, uh, showing you how to do direct fire with the unpredictability. Fixed wing, air, fixed wing aircraft and helicopters and things like that. Thermal imaging that I mentioned to you earlier on. And then the rules reference card, which is in the back of the rule book, is now reproduced here uh, in a simple fold out. This is, like I said, this will be all you'll need to play the game, basically. And here, 
This is just a skill reference card. There's only four cards that are ever used. Oh no, I was wrong. Okay, so there's all the reference. There's all the <laughs> all the different uh, capabilities for the the skills for the heroes and the leaders. Uh, your, your actual combat resolution for direct fire, melee. Some, got some additional summary stuff here. They're just descriptions of the results, and then the uh, the terrain, which once again is. Uh, you know, I, I spoke to I spoke to David about this uh, for the last last module that I was looking at. I think Heroes of Normandy or whatever. They had done the terrain and not put it in alphabetical order. Not that that really matters terribly much because you've got the icons to see what's what, so you're really going to key in on the icon and look at it. But they did reprint uh, for... Uh, they, they did a revision of the uh, this chart and reprinted them and uh, put them into the games that hadn't been shipped yet and put them in alphabetical order, just because it's easy to go from uh, from B down to L or S in alphabetical order when you're looking for stuff. But anyway, this is all cool. I like the format and the layout. I like having the little counters here. That's pretty nice. That's the great thing about the, their company now. They can reprint this stuff and print or print it uh, on the fly because they do it all in-house themselves. Sequence of play chart if you want to use it. Some of these things you're not going to need, but it's nice if you have them. And this is another another summary that so uh, this is actually fan-made content that uh, has now been adopted and licensed by David or used by David. He came to some terms with the, with the person who uh, created it. And then a turn track chart, of course. Right, so lots of stuff, right? Now, here's the regular maps, which are fantastic. Great, almost photorealistic detail on those things. These buildings are pretty groovy as well. You've got your coastal line, and then you've got multi-level uh, terrain. All that sort of good stuff there, your standard hex size stuff. Now, then of course you have the X maps. And you can see a single map is substantially larger than your regular size map. Now when I'm going to a coffee shop to play with a buddy or whatever, I'm taking, I'm taking these smaller maps typically. But when I'm playing at home, I'm playing on these guys. And once you start playing on these big maps, it's really hard to go back, I can tell you that. Uh, I still love the mounted maps just because of the, the quality of them. I think they're fantastic. I'm going to keep my old version of uh, Heroes of the Falklands, uh, Ring of Hills, and I will be using my my excuse me my mounted maps just because I like them. But those X maps are fantastic. A couple of baggies, three counter sheets. Okay, so let's see. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our uh, Argentine forces here. We've got the. There's two different types. I forget what the the one is a better quality. I think these guys are the mar the Marines. Some of the uh, these chappies here, commandos or whatever they are. There's the ship counter, which is split across three. Uh, counters, which is kind of funky, but there you have it. I guess that's just a something to do with the printer that couldn't handle that. I'm not sure why that's like that. Uh, and then you've got your marines. Now, these are hard to tell the difference, but they're, they're, this is the full counter and the reduced counter. And they've got the icons kind of buried behind this guy here, and that's just an artifact from the original artwork. But you've got the, and I, I don't know the emblems of the British formations, but one of the command, one of the Royal Marines, and the others are uh, somebody else. <laughs> you guys will probably know better than I do about that. Great, these counters are great. Uh, nice thickness, uh, nice uh, print job on them all. Very well cut, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I love these. I love the new skill, the format of the skill, uh, skill chits. They're, they're groovy, and uh, you've got your wire cards, wooden buildings. You actually add buildings to the map for this game. And you've got some vehicles in here as well, and then you've got hover, uh, hover chits, for, which is a, which did not. Now one game didn't have them. Uh, 
but I think these are great so you can denote whether something is hovering or at uh, and because you're either hovering or flying and so it's nice to have that uh, to be able to denote the difference. And then a full set of information counters, which did not come with the previous uh, version of the game. And then, did I show you that? Yeah, I already showed you that. Yeah, so three sheets, three sheets of counters, real nice stuff. We've got the rec, I like that these rec markers are different too. Let's see what's on the back of them. What is that? It's like a, just a smoking hulk. And on the back, yeah, same deal. Rough terrain, mines. Nice stuff. Okay, so there you have it in, well, there you go, 16 minutes. That's what happens when I take my time. All right, uh, another fantastic uh, production of this system. Uh, reproduction, I should say. Great box, nice artwork, good counters, great maps. I think, uh, I think everybody will be happy with that once you get your hands on it. I... Uh, I will probably take this away with me on my next business trip. I'll take a, a couple of scenarios with me and we'll we'll post some pictures up. Alright dudes, I'll talk to you later.